Hi and welcome to the quadratic formula part one. And this is going to be our third method for solving quadratics. It is the tenth video in my quadratic video series. And we've also seen factorizing quadratics to solve them and completing the square to solve them. And you will have dealt with the algebra associated with those and the, the difficulty and abstract nature of those methods. This is going to rely simply on substitution. It will be a two part video. Um, or video series on quadratic formula and there'll be a third part introducing another factor that's important when we get into quadratic functions but for now in the first video I'm just going to show you the quadratic formula and give you examples in the second video I'm going to derive the quadratic formula and show you where it comes from and the third video we'll talk about the quadratic formula and the implications it has on quadratic functions including the discriminant so here is the quadratic formula and this will be a handy one to remember. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And I really cannot stress enough how important it's going to be to remember this formula. Quadratics will come up the whole way through math methods, but they won't always be being assessed. So once you get past that assessment stage, the expectation will be that you just solve them. However, and the quadratic formula may be the quickest way. It of course comes from the fact that a standard quadratic can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c. And so you'll see this link. a is this a and this a. b is this b and this b. And c is this c here. So they're just direct substitutions based on the coefficients of x squared, x and c. Remember, a is not the first coefficient, it's not the first number to appear, it's the number in front of x squared, wherever the x squared lies. So let's have a look at solving to find our x values based on some examples. But what I will say very quickly is that I'm, not, I'm going to leave my answers in exact form, so as thirds, you may need to actually calculate them sometimes. I'm just not going to do that because of the lag involved in me actually getting the calculator out and creating those answers. So example 1, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Now, this one is actually an easy one to solve using factorising, but we're going to use the quadratic formula, and you may want to just check your factorising skills with this question. So we're going to recognise, first of all, that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 8. And unless you're extremely confident, I really recommend you writing a list down of the values of a, b, and c. And so therefore we get this. x is equal to negative b, which is negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 6 squared, minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 8, all over 2 times 1. And so this is equal to negative 6 plus or minus, you'll find you're not doing a lot of work on the inside here, 36 minus 32 over 2, which is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. And so this, of course, is equal to negative 6 plus or minus 2 over 2. Oh, I'll just move that poorly placed negative sign there. And this is where we get that split. Again, we get the split, plus or minus that. It's negative 6 plus 2 over 2, or negative 6 minus 2 over 2. And we can evaluate these two to give us negative 4 over 2, or negative 8 over 2, which is equal to negative 2, or negative 4. And you can check that by factorising this to see if it works. The other way you can check it, is with a quick verification is if these work they should satisfy the equation so let's try one negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 plus 8 is equal to 4 minus 12 plus 8 which is equal to 0 which is what it should be equal to so you can do that really quick check as well so let's have a look at a second example and this one won't be so nice. So we have 3x squared plus 13x minus 10 
is equal to 0. And so A is equal to 3, B is equal to 13, and C is equal to negative 10. And we have this. X is equal to negative B, negative 13, plus or minus the square root, 13 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 10, all over 2 times 3. And so this is equal to negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 plus 120 over 6. And so this is equal to negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 289 all over 6, which is equal to, I'll just check that square root because I suspect that the square root of 289 is actually 17, and it is. So it's negative 13 plus or minus 17 over 6, which is equal to negative 13 plus 17 over 6, or negative 13 minus 17 over 6. And simplifying these in one go, negative 13 plus 17 is 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. Negative 13 minus 17 is negative 30 over 6, which is negative 5. And so there's our two answers, 2 thirds or negative 5. You see here, this has come up actually quite nice. And you could have factorised this using our non-monic factorisation technique. And again, let's have a look at example 3. Last example for this series, for this video, 5x squared plus 12x minus 15 is equal to 0. A is equal to 5, B is equal to 12, C is equal to negative 15. Note that negative carries with the C value, so it remains there. And we get this, x is equal to negative B, which is negative 12, plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 15 all over 2 times 5 negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus 20 times 15 is 300 over 10 negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 444 over 10. Now just reach back in time a little bit to your work with thirds. Negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 444 is 2 times the square root of 111 because I can take a factor of 4 out and the square root of 4 is 2 over 10. 111 is um, not prime because there's a factor of 3 but it has no square factors. I can check it really quickly. It's odd, so I don't have to worry about even factors. 3 squared is 9. doesn't divide by 9 because 108 does. The next square odd number is 25, and it doesn't do that. 49 doesn't go into it, and that's all the checking I have to do. Um, so I can write this down now as negative 12 plus 2 root 111 over 10, or negative 12 minus 2 root 111, over 10, and of course I can simplify by taking out a factor of 2 to leave me with negative 6 plus the square root of 111 over 10, or negative 6 minus the square root of 111 over 10. And there's our two answers. Irrational, impossible to factorise to get these answers. Completing the square would have worked, um, and we can finish at that point. So that is using a quadratic formula to solve quadratics, and it will work in every case. So you're welcome to use this unless directed otherwise, and it will be worthwhile memorizing the formula. In the next video, I'll show you where this comes from. All the best. <laughs>